Hi, this is Vivian Vandeveld. Um, welcome to Chapter 2 of Ghost of a Hanged Man, a very spooky story that I will be sharing with you uh, over 15 days, one chapter at a time. This is Chapter 2, The Hanged Man. Some of the townspeople were worried that Jake Barnett had friends who would try to rescue him the day of the hanging. Pa reminded them that Jake's two best friends were among the 16 people he'd killed. They had been members of his gang, and Jake had shot them rather than divide the money with them. Nobody's likely to come, Pa said. Still, he spent the night at the jail, and he assigned Emmett Sanders to come to the house and stay with us. No gang members showed up at our house, but Emmett did catch Annabelle trying to sneak out her window the morning of the hanging. Our bedrooms are on the second floor, and there's a big old elm she'd been known to use before. I don't know if Annabelle figured Emmett would be easy to fool on account of his being young and new to the job, or if she hoped his age would make him more understanding. But Emmett marched us both to my room, which is on the opposite side of the house, with the closest tree being the one way over in Widow Haybecker's yard. He set a chair against my door, sat himself down, and read the newspaper right there in the hall. Grat, Annabelle said. Well, I tried to encourage her. No matter what they said, I bet some of the other eight and nine-year-olds won't be going either. But you'll be the only one who can say, it took an armed guard to keep you away. It would be a good excuse for me, too, and nobody had to know that the armed guard and I thought alike on this. The good thing about Annabelle is that, for as often as she throws a sulk, at least she can't keep it up long. Elijah Quinn says that he saw a bunch of hangings back in Kansas City before his family moved here, she said. He told me sometimes when the trapdoor falls away, the noose breaks the hanged man's neck and he dies right away. But sometimes it doesn't, and he strangles to death with his tongue hanging out, and that takes a lot longer. The trouble with you, I said, is that you have no imagination. Do too, Annabelle said. I can picture that happening. So can I. The difference is, for me, picturing it is bad enough. I don't want to really see it. Baby, she taunted me. Goosome toad, I retaliated. Eventually, Pa came home, which meant it was all over, and no sign of any of Jake's friends. Did his neck snap, Annabelle asked Pa, or did he choke to death? Pa just shook his head in exasperation. But Annabelle and I were sitting on the front porch when the Quinn family drove by in their wagon, last of all to leave, because Mr. Quinn is the undertaker. Elijah caught Annabelle watching and held his clenched fist by his neck and then jerked his hand up, tipping his head way over to the side, which we guess signified broken neck. And sure enough, that was all we heard about for the next few days. By the following week, it was old news. And by the week after that, the whole business about the trial and the threats and the hanging didn't seem nearly as interesting as the fact that somebody's stray cat had had kittens under the front porch of the schoolhouse. Just about everybody forgot about Jake Barnett. Until spring. Thanks for tuning in for Chapter 2. Tune in tomorrow for Chapter 3.